another horrible month comes to an end. In the first series in Erica's Edge, I asserted that Jamaica was critically ill. Call it my youthful exuberance or a senior moment, but that was a tragic misdiagnosis. The horrid crimes inflicted on this nation during the month of May were not critical illnesses. They are terminal illnesses. And I was very glad when the month bled to a horrific end last week. I have never seen a month when the toilet featured so prominently like it did in May, for all the wrong reasons. It was a month of more, Lord Jesus. The biggest loss in many ways was to our children. Losing children is losing the future. The loss of our future is anarchy. And after anarchy is no recovery. The deaths of the children any month of the year are caused by deranged minds. Those minds have been deranged for a long time because we have been killing children a long time. The society was the next biggest loser as life has less and less value each day because the wretched of the earth continue to hold the promises to ransom. When you kill a responsible and decent father, a man walking his son, teaching him how to cross the roadways, a father jogging to keep a healthy mind in a healthy body, or a bride four or eight year old, the society loses. Families are destroyed and for many children, the pain is permanent. That pain can lead to dysfunction. So those who criticize Reverend Stanley Redwood for putting family first, I say to them, leave him alone. He is trying to raise children who are not dysfunctional. The economy was the next biggest loser as the number of criminal minds Jamaica produces on a daily basis is frightening. Those who will grow up to be positive contributors to this society in the future are in the minority. It means that as bad as we think things are now, it will get worse. Criminality rises because the state has failed decent citizens. When you are the victim of a violent crime, there is only a 20% chance that the perpetrator will be caught. There is more protection for perpetrators of crimes than victims of crimes. Perpetrators have successfully caused the innocent to become compliant with their dirty ways, forcing them to live with crime as a way of life. It's walk and live, or talk and dead. That is the reality. That is the truth. Children lost again in May when Doran Dixon and Paul Adams successfully made asses of themselves in part two of their cocaine-injected, dog-related attack on the education minister, Ronald Thwaites. I hope someone will drag both of them in the corner of a public toilet and sentence them to the smell. I bet they will have new respect for a naughty corner in the future. We have a dysfunctional system that need radical fixing fast. We cannot continue like this. We cannot. With a heavy heart, I give this week's bouquet to the JTA for an attempt at decency by barring Doran Dixon from running for its top job. And the bin goes to everyone harboring murderers. May your consciences kill you first. Until next week, stay close to the edge.